Um, so, uh, like I said, Leon has promised a funny evening for tonight. What I, what I, one thing that I love about about his book is that it says, this book is perfect for anyone who thinks about relationships in an analytical way, and that means most men. Uh, but it's written for couples. Uh, he he takes uh, he takes a very serious subject, and that is our financial investments, and he lightens it up and tries to apply the um, basic theories to uh, making your most important relationship in your life as important as your financial um, future. Uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm just going to let. Um, Leon, take it from here, but we're thrilled that you're here tonight. He's thrilled that you're here tonight. I think you're going to go home really happy and excited to take some of the tools that he's going to share with you tonight. And um, again, thank you very much for coming. He is going to um, talk about his book. He is going to take questions and answers, so you'll have time for all of that. And then he is also going to autograph and sign any books that you purchase uh, tonight. So um, at the end of the event, uh, hopefully you're inclined. Uh, to purchase a copy of the book, and um, he'd be happy afterwards to be able to uh, meet you, answer any questions, um, and sign copies of your books up here. So, thank you very much for coming, and I'd like to introduce Leon Scott Baxter. Uh, thank you guys all for coming today, and uh, first off, um, I, wanted, I wanted to thank the Capitola Book Cafe for putting this together, so just give them a big round of applause. Thank you very much. And it's great to see so many familiar faces. Um, you know, this is this is where I'm from. I, I I came here when I was in fourth grade. Came to this area in fourth grade, and I stayed up until I graduated from San Lorenzo Valley High School. And um, I live in South, Southern California now, uh, and I'm back for two reasons. One, for today's event, and also because tomorrow is the San Lorenzo Valley Class of 1987's 25th High School Reunion, and I'm back for that. So, any Cougars in the house? <laughs> if you if you didn't if you didn't go to school with me, you may think nothing of the fact that I'm called America's Romance Guru. But if you went to school with me, if you if you went to school with me in elementary school or junior high school, even the first couple of years of, of high school, you may be wondering how I became this this relationship guy. See, I'll be the first to admit it. I was a funny looking kid. It, now. Um, if you if you didn't know me back then, you may be able to surmise that because I'm I'm a funny looking man, and <laughs> you know, it, it's and it's true because I, I've got I've got crooked teeth and I got these ears that stick out. But but when I was in school, I was like I was like a walking Picasso painting. The I, girls weren't really all that interested in me. I, I had this I had this romantic streak in me early on in life, and girls just weren't having it because. I, I, I not only had the cross, the, the, the funky teeth and, and the ears, but I had freckles all over my face. And, and my teeth were, I had uh, an overbite, and I had buck teeth. And my hair, oh my gosh, my hair wouldn't grow, grow long. My hair, my hair grew big. My hair, I walked around, I looked like a walking stalk of broccoli. It was just like up like that. And, um, and so, so, yeah, so the girls just weren't really, really excited about, about, about me and how I looked. And I came here in fourth grade. I came to Boulder Creek, Ele uh, went to Boulder Creek Elementary School. And we moved next to um, this kid named Spencer. And Spencer and I, we would, we would hang out and, and play after school. And we would, we would um, uh, build forts. And we took the bus to school every morning. And, and one morning, after about a couple weeks of being there, I was standing in the, waiting for the bus with Spencer. And um, Spencer looks at me and he says, Leo, when you get on the bus today, don't sit next to me. And I said, what? And you could tell he was smaller than I am. And um, he said, yeah, and also, um, don't talk to me when you get on the bus. I said, why not? He said, I'm pretty sure the other kids think you're funny. Right? <laughs> and I, I should have just found the kid right there, but I didn't because I, I couldn't blame him. He wasn't alone. I don't know if you guys, if some of you guys know, uh, there's, there's a girl named Julie in fourth grade, and some, she grew up with us in like, San Lorenzo Valley High School, and Julie was in, I was in Mrs. Gurley's fourth grade class, and, and there was another fourth grade class next to ours, and Julie was in that class, and what happened was, Julie's fourth grade teacher would have them go out to recess like a minute before my class, so they would go out, and they'd all run out, yeah, I'm going to go play, and Julie wouldn't walk, she'd go out, I guess, she'd walk out, and she'd walk over to Mrs. Gurley's class, and she'd go, wait patient. 
And then I would come out of the class with all the other kids, and she'd wait for me, and I got out, and she would go like this. Ew, gross! And then she'd run and play on the monkey bars. Every single time. So, so you know, the thing is, obviously, I had, I had these beaver teeth, and I had, you know, I had these funky ears, Charlie Brown ears, and, but I felt like the elephant man. Um, yeah, I, I did have a bit of a complex, but girls, they, these girls just they weren't ha having the whole romance thing. They, they saw me as this funny guy. They saw me as a funny guy. I wasn't the romantic guy. I was the funny, like the funny looking guy. And, and when I got to junior high school, things didn't get any better. I, junior high school is when you started going to dances, right? Well, I couldn't really dance very well. I didn't have any rhythm. But I went to junior high school dances regardless because I wanted to interact with the ladies. And, um, because I was the ladies man, of course. Mm -hmm. So, the thing is, back, back then in junior high school, we, we didn't have a lot of money. And, do you guys remember OP clothes, Ocean Pacific? Mm -hmm. They were like the rage. Everyone wanted OP clothes, and they were kind of expensive. And so, we couldn't afford to pay a lot of money for clothes, so I had one OP shirt. And it, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't even OP. It was, it was a Kmart knockoff OP shirt. I had one Kmart knockoff OP shirt, and it was my favorite shirt. So I, I, I would wear that shirt. I would never wear it to school. I would, would not wear it on the weekends. I would only wear it at the junior high school dances. Every junior high school dance. So can you imagine being a 13-year-old girl, and you're at a junior high school dance, and, the, and open arms comes on? You guys remember open arms? Open arms, the song would come on. And up comes this freckle face, uh, buck tooth, Charlie Brown ear, bro broccoli headed guy who can't dance wearing the same <laughs> knockoff OP shirt that you wore at the last four dances, asking you to dance. Yeah, that was that was my life. And and so things things didn't go very well with the with the with the girls at the time. But um so how did I become you know this romance guy? Hmm. Well well as I got into um into high school, I had braces and by my junior year, my braces came off, my, my freckles started to fade, and um, I trimmed my broccoli, and I, I learned how to dance a little bit. So I looked like, kind of like a normal guy, right? But I had no game when it came to girls, none whatsoever. If I was, to, if I was going to say, there's a, I'm going to go ahead and pursue her, that meant I was not going to get her. I never landed a girl that I pursued, never. But the thing was, because I was a funny guy, I had female friends, and the female, females women really like funny guys. So sometimes I find myself falling into a relationship. I go after this one, nothing, and then, oh, look at hey, it's a relationship. Thank you, relationship. Once I was in a relationship, I was good. I was good at romance. So why is that? Well, my mom, my mom's here today. Mom, say hello. That's my mom. Give it to my mom. My mom, she, she, she virtually raised me for um, a lot of a lot of my childhood by, um, by herself. So I spent a lot of time with her and her girlfriend, and um, and they, they they talked a lot, and I did a lot of listening. And as a result, I started to understand women, and, and I became this romantic guy. So I went ahead. And, so here I am. I'm in relationships. I'm in high school. I look halfway normal, and. I know how to be romantic. So word got around school that, oh, Leon's this kind of romantic guy. And so the girls would come up to me and say, Leon, would you please talk to my, my boyfriend? Teach him some romantic tricks. And even guys, guys would come up to me, some guys came up to me and said, Leon, would you please, uh, you know, my anniversary's coming up. It wasn't, even, it wasn't an anniversary. You guys remember it wasn't? It was month anniversaries. You remember that? <laughs> Our third month anniversary's coming up next week. What do I do? And I'd say, hmm. Put together a Duran Duran Madonna mixtape and you'd be good to go. You know, so, <laughs> and so, so, so basically who I became kind of started in this community and, and I, I really appreciate the, uh, this community for that. So I went, I went ahead and, and graduated from SLV, went to um, UC Santa Barbara and while I was there, I, I was still romantic with my, with my girlfriends and, and people said, you, you, should, you should write a book. You should hold a seminar. You should, you should talk at a workshop. And I said, no, I shouldn't. That's not what I do. I'm going, I'm going to be a director. I'm, going to, I'm a film major. I'm going to be the next Steven Spielberg. I'm not going to go ahead and do that. I'm just, I'm just a romantic guy. That's it. So, I, so do, just stop bugging me. But for years, people just write this, talk this. It's so finally 1999. 1999, I wrote my first book. 
Out of the Doghouse, A Man's Secret Survival Guide to Romance. And I wrote the book, and basically all it, all it was was um, my, my love poems I'd written, love notes, um, romantic adventures I put together. I wrote them all down, and, and it, was for the, it was for the romantically challenged male. All he had to do was take the book, look at it, write things down, put his name on the bottom, and turn it in, and he's good to go. It was like a cliff notes of romance. <laughs> the thing is, I, I, didn't, I didn't have, I didn't know how to, how to publish a book. You know, I was going to be a filmmaker. I mean, it was, yeah, I was a filmmaker, but I didn't know how to publish a book. So, I said, okay, I'm just going to head, type it up, and I printed it on my dot matrix printer. You guys remember dot matrix printers for the, those younger people? Those are things that we, anyway. Okay, so I had this pile of papers. I went over to the local coffee shop. I said, please make this into books for me. And they said, okay, come back in a week. So I came back, and I had this box. And I said, thank you, full of books. And I said, now I'm an author. I've got a box of books. And I sold a good eight, nine books all together. <laughs> and my mom bought six of them. Thank you, Mom. Give up to Mom. <laughs> but what it did was great. It, it started me on my way. And so I, I from that, I, I made my first um, website, doghousefree.com. And that, and that was to help men with romance advice. So men would ask me questions, and I'd give them the answers. And then women started asking me romance questions. So I said, oh, okay, I'll answer that question. And then a funny thing happened. People started asking me relationship questions. And what's the difference between romance and relationships? This is romance. This is relationships. Within relationships, there's romance, and there's intimacy, and there's trust, and there's, and there's communication. There's a lot more stuff in there. And I didn't feel like I knew relationships. I knew romance. So I'd say, sorry, I, that's not my level of expertise. I can't answer your question. But people would still keep asking me questions about, about relationships. So finally I said, that's not my area of expertise. But if you want my opinion, here it is. I give my opinion. But I want ginger. I didn't want, I just, I, I, it wasn't my area of expertise, so I didn't, I didn't want to step on anyone's toes. I didn't want to offend anyone. And the thing is, it's really not me at all, because I offend people all the time. And so, uh, so uh, finally, one, one day I get this email from this guy, and he was, he was, a, he was a jerk. And he says, you know, he, he was really disrespecting his, his, his girlfriend. And, um, and so I said, you know what? I'm going to tell him that. I'm not going to walk genuinely around this guy. Nope. I said, you're, you're acting like a jerk. You're lucky she's still with you. <laughs> I said, if she had come to me, I I did this because I was learning how to play the piano. I, was dying. <laughs> I said, if she was to come to me and ask me this question, I would have said, it dropped you like a bad habit. You need to get some, some, some professional help. <laughs> I was like, that's it. This is my first time being serious. I'm going to send this. I didn't, I didn't press the send button right away. Because I didn't know how much he could bench press. I didn't know if he had taken meds for his anger issues, if he, if he, was, if he had an arrest record. So I was just waiting to, to make sure that I checked everything, make sure he couldn't trace it back to me. When I found out, okay, I'm good. I couldn't remember, I would love another fighter. I said, that's right. That's right. Next day, bing, you got me. My heart's right. So I, I check, the, press the button, and first thing it says, Leon, you were right. What? I was right? Let me keep reading this. It says, she does deserve better. I've always known this about myself, but I never wanted to admit it. You're the first person to tell it to me straight. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going I'm to go ahead and get a therapist next week, start next week, thank you. I was like, seriously? People want me to tell them the truth? <laughs> oh, no, he didn't. He, he just opened Pandora's relationship box. He gave me the green light to just tell it as is. So I said, that's it. I'm just going to tell it as is. I'm not walking gingerly. I'm going to tell it as it is. So I started doing some research. And I started working on the communication part and the, and the and intimacy and, and, the, and the trust. And, and I learned, uh, you know, studied, and researched, and, and, and I did surveys. And I, I wrote a second book, A Labor with Love. Oh, I started another website, uh, Couples Committed to Love. And, and and I started doing uh, workshops and seminars, and radio guests, and all this stuff. And then seven months ago, my newest baby was born, mm -hmm. The Finance of Romance. And I'd written that book um, because I decided it, it was, it, finance is important to all of us, but so are our relationships. And you know, after struggling through the recession, many of us have learned to start to get our feet underneath us as far as finance and investment. 
but still the divorce rate in our country hovers just under 50%. You know, we're, we're starting to get things together a little bit financially, but not so much in the relationship department. The financial romance, it just takes what we learn with regard to, to money and shows couples how to take those same strategies and tweak them for their relationship, to invest in their relationship. And the book was born because four years ago I was asked to do a talk. And it was the biggest talk I had ever done at the time. I was asked to talk to 50 couples, 100 people, for 60 minutes, blabbing about relationships and romance and love and all that kind of stuff. And I said, okay, what am I gonna, what's my theme going to be? I said, I know. At the time, I, would, I had clients and, and I would talk to them and I'd say, you, know, you need to invest in your relationship. It's to, you know, you'll get a great return. So I said, I'm going to take five relationship, I mean, five financial tips and show couples how to tweak them so they can invest in their relationship. So I... I practiced my talk, I practiced my talk, and some people might say that I was excited, or that I was anxious, and I, I, I wasn't excited, I wasn't anxious, I was petrified to talk in front of 100 people. I was so scared. That night, the night before the event, my wife, where's my wife? Oh, my, okay. my, wife too. <laughs> my wife was in bed next to me, laying all nice and cuddly and making little soft sleep noise. <laughs> You know, it's nice. And I was next to her like this, eyes wide open, and my brain was going a thousand miles an hour. So I'm trying to figure out, okay, well, what, that, what, will I say this right? Will they get this joke? Well, does this make sense? Should I tell this story? And I just couldn't get to sleep. I got four hours of sleep that night. Now, I'm an eight hour a night sleep guy. Seven hours, 45 minutes? Nope, doesn't touch me. Doesn't, now, I wake up without my eight hours, and my tongue doesn't work. I can't find words in my brain. I can't string vocabulary together to make a coherent sentence. So I woke up that day with four hours of sleep, and I was like mush. I'm always like, what's wrong with you? I said, I didn't sleep for eight hours. And so she said, so, so I, I said, what am I going to do? And I had the whole day, the whole day, because it was an evening event, I had the whole day to be worried. So I was worried, and as a result, I had lost my appetite. So I couldn't eat. We went to a 50s diner that evening. I ordered french fries and cheeseburger and big milkshake, and I had 16 fries and a half glass of water. That was it. Couldn't eat anything else. So I get to the event, and there I am. I'm tired, and I'm worried, and I'm nervous, I'm exhausted, and my stomach's off, and my tongue's good. And they said, ladies and gentlemen, we have got back to Rickers Romance Guru. And I stood up, and everything changed. Everything changed. Appetite, nothing in my stomach was wrong, and my brain started cranking, and my, I woke up, and my tongue was working, and it was a fantastic talk. It was wonderful. And it was because I believed in what I was doing, and I, you know, I, I believed in what I was saying. And let me tell you, I, I had done seminars and, and workshops before that, and um, afterward, generally, women come and talk to me. And men generally don't. They're waiting by the door. They're ready to go. The reason, and, and men, we, we want our relationships to work out also, but we just don't. We're, we really don't like to talk about love and romance and relationship because it's too abstract for us. We like the concrete. And so after this talk, more men came and talked to me than women. I was like, what is this all about? So I'm driving home, trying to figure out why, and I realized it was because I spoke on a subject that women understood, but in a way that men got. I spoke about an abstract concept in a concrete way. I talked about finances and numbers and growth and, and risk and investment. And, and that's, how, that's how this book was born. Investing in finances and investing in, in your relationships have a lot of similarities. We want short-term as well as long-term returns. In both. Now, in both, there's debt. You know, in, in, in finance, if you, you want to make sure your debt's paid off before you start investing. Because if you invest and you have debt, it's not going to do anything for you. In relationships, debt is any negative that outweighs the positive. And if we don't deal with that first, before we start investing in a relationship, we really can't go anywhere. In both finance and relationship, you, once your debt's cleared, you need to invest immediately regularly and consistently. You can't just put down a chunk of money and say, okay, that's good, I'll be good for retirement. You can't just buy a, a, a piece of jewelry and some flowers and say, okay, we're good for our relationship for the rest of our lives. You have to keep it up. 
you need to make a make and stick to a relationship budget. Uh, a budget in, in finances shows you how to, to, to work with what you've got so you can have money to, st to set aside. Couples tell me all the time, I can't work on my relationship, there's no time. So the budget for your relationship is a, a budget of time. You need to figure out what you have and how you can work within that and find time for your partner. And once you do all that, you've got good credit. On the financial side, you want to have good credit so, that you look, so the, the banks trust you. On the relationship side, you want to have good credit so your partner trusts you. You want to do the right thing. Um, the book talks about uh, the financial topics and then it goes on and tweaks it and shows you how to, to apply that to your relationship. And I, I have like personal stories in there. But that's all like theory. What I love about the book is that at the end of each chapter, there's a quick portfolio stretching activity that shows the readers how to apply it so that they don't just read and go, that, that's neat, but how do I do it? Right there, this is how you do it. And it's, and it's real short, and I don't, I don't want people to just like, oh, this is, you know, this is too complex, this is too much stuff. I don't want people to stick it aside. I want people to actually to utilize it. Neither, neither financial nor relationship success is easy, but anything that, that's worthwhile takes time, takes effort, takes work. I'm gonna end with um, a quick story that happened to me in 1989. I was, I was, work, I was uh, in college, and I was working as a front desk manager at um, a hotel. And um, Dom DeLuise's wife, Carol Arthur, came to stay with us. Dom DeLuise, the comedian. Um, and his wife came to stay with us for, for a month. She was doing a play in town. And every single day, the mail would come, and there would be a letter for her from Dom DeLuise. And he'd always be outside, draw little cartoons and stickers and stamps on it. And every night, he would call and, and ask to speak with her. And I would answer the phone. He goes, yes, Car Carol Arthur, please. And I say, I'll put you right through. And I put him through. And if she wasn't in, the phone would ring back, and I say, oh, she's not in, I may take a message. And so I take a message. After about a week of that, one night he called, is Carol Arthur in? No, she's not, I'll put her through, I'll put her through. The phone rings back, she's not in, I may, may take a message. He says, well, are you busy right now? I'm like, no, not really. He says, uh, what's your name? I said, my name's Leon. He goes, I'm Dom Delois. I said, I know. <laughs> he said, um, he says, sorry, are you a college student? And, and we started talking. We talked for about 15, 20 minutes that evening. And from then on, every time he would call, if his wife wasn't in, he and I would chat. And we became phone buddies. And he was a funny guy, but I could also tell he really missed his wife during that month. On closing night of the play, I was at the front desk, and in walked Carol Arthur, and she said, are you Leon? I said, yes. She said, Dom's in the car. He wants to meet you. I said, oh my gosh, Dom DeLuise. I jumped over the counter. I ran out to see Dom DeLuise. And he was, he's a really, he's a big guy. He was like over 300 pounds. And, and I think that's the reason why they had me go out to, to the car. I said, it was difficult for him to, to get up. And I met him, and it, it was just, it was fantastic. It was great. And, and we stayed in contact until he was passing three years ago. And the thing is that um, what I learned from him in 1989 was about relationships. I could tell that he really loved his wife and his wife loved him. And I knew they invested in their, in their marriage. Just a small clip of, of their, their relationship, I was privileged to see was great. And he wrote to her every day, he called her every night. And when they were together, I could tell they really loved each other. They were the uncommon Hollywood couple. They were married 44 years before, um, before he passed away. And I realized you don't have to be a Casanova or a Don Juan to have a wonderful relationship or to bring romance to your relationship. It doesn't matter if you're 350 pounds, if you've got Charlie Brown ears, if you've got buff teeth or rocking hair. <laughs> if you invest in your relationship, you can guarantee a positive return. And, and that's what the financial romance is all about. It's about investing in your relationship to get a positive return. And I want to thank you guys for indulging my stories. So thank you very much. I guess, um, I guess we're open for questions and answers. Anybody want to know um, how I did my hair today? How I got <laughs> from broccoli to a little cauliflower thing going on? I guess I answered them all, huh? Pretty good. Oh, Tamara! Uh, um, you go ahead first. Oh, Heather! Yeah, of course. Well, Don't I just fight, know, ladies. When did you meet Mary? When did I meet Mary? Yeah. I met Mary, that woman back there, the first day of college. Oh, wow. And again, humor is a big deal because that's how I got to where I am in life. 
And so I went first day of college, it was everyone, we're in the dorms, and I walked down the hallway and I knocked on her door and she answered it and I told her I was from the, um, the college uh, welcoming committee. And, um, and she believed me until a few days later and she realized that I was. But it was, but like I said, so there, there I was, I, I, I met someone, right? How many years until I finally kissed you? Well, like three, three years. years. Three years later. So it's a thousand days after I met her, I kissed her. Yeah, I got game. <laughs> so, um, uh, I a couple of questions. But uh, what happened to your uh, your goal with directing and film? Are you doing any of that with well, your with your writing work and your I, presentations? I do. I have a, a YouTube channel, and um, I have every month I put up a new video on five minutes on how to five minutes of relationship investment. So five minutes, I go ahead and give you a quick five minute rundown of what you can do to invest in relationships. And, and you'll see I wear this exact same ensemble. Oh. I, because I, you just never know when I shot it, right? So I, this is my, this is my uh, American Romance Guru ensemble. So you go, whoa, when did you do this? Was that last week, last month, last year? Oh, that's incredible. And, I, and I, that means I can't really cut my hair. I can keep it exactly like this. And so my other question is, you told us about your first uh, self-publishing experience. That's yes. actually, that's like a true self-publishing yes. um, story. Yes. Um, and then tell us about uh, the journey of, um, of getting this book published. Oh, well, this one, um, it was, I went and I, I my first book, my first book, I self-published, and the second book I sent out. Um, I got 300 re rejections, 300 no's, but 301. No. Um, actually, I self-published the second book also. But um, so I, I, I learned along the way on how to get uh, what, how to write a, a letter to, to, to agents and to the publishers. And I actually had, I actually had an agent for the last book, um, but she, she, she was unable to find. She, what she said was, the publishers love your book. But no man's gonna buy it <laughs> because because it was too. Come on, didn't I just go over this with you guys? Yeah. <laughs> there we go, you win! Yay! It was too abstract. It, you guys, it wasn't concrete enough. So, um, but they love the book, and so this one, I, I, you know, my books are all for men. All the books, I mean, this this is for couples. But I really have the eye, you know, I, I look at what's a man gonna read because um, I mean. We, if it's, it's about romance, we're not going to read a book this big about romance. Oh, look, I have a 700 book, page book about romance. I can't wait to get to it. No, it doesn't happen. It's 160 pages, and there's like, you know, a lot of spaces, you know. <laughs> so we, we, we like snippets and chunks. So anyway, um, and yeah, it was great. This uh, publisher in uh, Utah, they loved the book, and they said, yeah, we went around with it. And there you go. Congratulations. Thank you. Do you do a lot of speaking engagements? I do a lot of radio and podcasts. And I do some speaking engagements, um, but yeah, I do. I'm, I'm, I'm on the radio a lot. If you go to my website, couplescommittedtolove.com, and you can come over here and grab um, bookmark on that love.com on it. You can, you can go and, and listen to me jab if I haven't jabbered enough. You can listen to me jabber about other stuff. Just find my YouTube channel. There's a bunch of stuff on there. Contact me. Oh, yes, it's my mom again. <laughs> Even though this book is written for couples, which is uh, suggested for other people, uh, may not even be in a relationship. Well, um, if they're going to be getting in a relationship at some point, it might be. And this is definitely focused for folks on couples. And uh, it's not how to find someone, because as you know, that's not what I do very well. Okay. But I did a great job, didn't I, with you, honey? Of course. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, it's, it's really definitely for couples who are in a relationship and how to keep a relationship strong. I, I think that this book, you know, it's, it's, if you're in a relationship, this book hopefully will help you out. But it's also a great gift for, for, for people, for couples, if you have kids who are married, if you have parents who are married, if, you're, if you know someone who's going to have an anniversary. If someone's got, having a wedding, <laughs> Still get them the toaster. You know, don't just make this the only gift. But this could be a great gift, also. You know, and and it's great for couples who who have a strong relationship because it keeps it strong. Um, and couples who are on a bit shaky ground, it might help them. If it's if it's really tough, this is not going to save a relationship. A professional is what you want to go to. But if it's if it's kind of like a, this might help out. My books are available online. You can go to Amazon.com. You can go to CouplesCommitmentLove.com. You, uh, Murphy. Um, so your books are 
afford to find someone. They're not, no, because yeah. if, if you follow my advice, you would not <laughs> ever find the right person this way. You just kind of fall this way. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you how to fall in the right direction. Yes. Well, I did read your book, and I'm not in a relationship, and I'm not looking for one, but it really taught me a lot about finance. Oh, you know what? Uh -huh. I'm. She, she's trying to get me to say the right thing. So you like the finance aspect of it? I did. Yeah, I am definitely not a finance uh, professional, but I did do a lot of research. I, I spoke with a good friend of mine who is actually a financial expert down in Santa Barbara, and he gave me a lot of advice. Uh, so this this does give you um, some of the basics on finance. On you know, I, he doesn't tell you how to do all the you know crazy investment and stuff, but it tells you how to save. How to every chapter starts with a financial strategy. So you get that, and then. I tweak it and show you how to apply that to your relationship. Nice to see you. Brett. Yeah, good to see you, Leon. How are you? Good, good. Been playing basketball lately? I'm a sorry, little bit. We're getting him. So what, I have a couple questions. One, what's the craziest thing that you've heard from a couple or some part of a couple in your where our kids here? So we have to be careful. <laughs> well, you know, that's appropriate for this audience, I guess. Um, yeah, there's, um, I'm trying to figure out how to word some things. Um, well, how about here? Maybe I have a, I have a better question okay. for you then. What, I mean, what's something that you've learned Am that I? you've been able to apply to your relationship or that it was just, that you've learned from people that you've worked with? Yeah, there's, um, I, I love to do special things for, for my wife. I like to, I call them romantic adventures. And um, there's a woman named uh, Mary Zalmanac. And she is uh, this woman who just does these incredible adventures. And I learned a lot from her. Like, I think, okay, I'm a good romance guru. I know how to do these great things for my wife. And I, I, I talked to her and, and learned from her. And she inspired me to, to do these incredible, it's incredible things you can do for people you love. And, and one of the things, actually, you can do not just for your, your partner, but for, for Madison, my, my daughter right there, Madison, um, when she had one of her birthday parties. Um, I took one of these concepts that I learned from Mary Zalmanek, and um, and so we had. Uh, she said, oh, "I want to go to Taco Bell. Remember that? I want to go to Taco Bell with my friend." And so we went to Taco Bell, and we whipped out this big tablecloth and had fine china <laughs> and, can and candles, and we lit them, and, and we took the, the Mountain Dew and put it into the goblins, and and everyone was like, "What's going on? What are they doing?" And they're eating tacos, and it was like such a cool thing. And so so you can apply these romantic adventures not just to romance, but to people you love and care for. And so Mary's Almanac was a, a, is a big inspiration for me. You want to know what size shoe I wear? What's that? Have you kept in touch with people? I have not, but last night, I brought my yearbook because of tomorrow, and I was flipping through the yearbook, and I showed Mary. I said, Mary, look what it says here. It's from Julie. Julie said to me, Oh, I can't believe this is, you know, this is the 12th grade. We're going to go our separate ways. I've known you for so long. Only back in fourth grade, in parentheses, ill gross. She wrote ill gross oh. in my book. <laughs> that's neat. <laughs> <laughs> that was ill gross. So. <laughs> but no, I have not kept in Julie's out. Yeah. Kept in touch with Julie. I was hoping that uh, maybe she might come to tomorrow's reunion. Oh, yeah. You guys know Nicole Brown? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, really. I know what to say to her tomorrow. Really, yeah. I know. Yeah. You know, if yeah, anyone who's going to the reunion, we see Julie. Everyone, when I say three, one, three, you guys say, "Yo, bros." But we can imitate her laugh, and that would be pretty good. Yeah, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just standing up here. You guys look at me. It's not fun. Um, I think, are we, are, Tamara, what do you think? Yeah, but if, you know what, if there's, if there's no more questions, then I say we clear the way so everybody can go up front and buy your book. Yeah, and, 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 and that can have you autograph it. Oh, oh,